So I'm going to make doors out of that. Stick around. You might learn something. Hey, I'm Jeff Devlin of Schoolhouse Woodworking. I'm a licensed contractor, woodworker. We named our company Schoolhouse Woodworking many, many years ago because the goal was to teach. Wow, that's nice. It's not always the perfect method, but it's a way that I've learned over the 30 years doing this that I believe sometimes simpler is better. Our cabinet that we made in previous videos, it's time to make uh, finished doors for it. We're gonna have two doors in the middle and then we'll have one flat panel with a drawer in um, the center there. So to make the doors, we need wood. We're using poplar today. We're gonna mill it all up and get it all nice and pretty and we're gonna make a door exactly like this. It's got a nice beaded detail on it, a center panel that floats and a detail or a, a t uh, construction that is cope and stick joinery. So first, I'm just gonna start making a lot of cuts. Anytime that I make a door, the style and rails are two and a half inches wide. So I'm just gonna start cutting the poplar at two and a half inches wide, and then we'll start milling up the detail on the door. So I've got them all cut to two and a half inches. I'm gonna take them over to my belt sander and get them all nice and perfectly sanded. This process for me, I can chunk everything together and it just cleans up the styles and rails so that way I, all of the prep is done here. If you don't have this big machine, it's okay. See the way I've got them all clamped or all stuck together? You can just get a sander and sand off any of those uh, saw marks on the styles and rails. All right, so now let's talk measurements. The door technology that we're using or the joinery for it is called cope and stick. This is called the stick. So it actually, you're relieving a, t uh, a groove and then you're also cutting the bead. The cope, which is the one you can see here on this end, you can see it copes over top of that joint. That's called the cope bit. So we have two different router bits to make this work. The math involved in this, because it's inset, gets a little tricky. So we're doing two doors. We're at 21 inches all the way across. What we are going to do is make two doors. So half is going to be at 10 and a half. So this door is 10 and a half, that door is 10 and a half. And then this measurement, whatever your measurement is, we're at 21 and three eighths, whatever your measurement is, because it's inset, you are going to subtract 3 sixteenths of an inch. If that makes sense, raise your hand. Come on, just raise your hand in front of the camera, make me feel good. There you go. So for this, it's going to be 21 and 13 sixteenths. And then for this door, it's going to be uh, 10 and 5 sixteenths. So you're subtracting 3 sixteenths of an inch. Why, you ask, is because when this door sits in there, if we make it the same size as the frame, like this, it won't open. It'll rub. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave a little bit of a gap underneath. And the tighter the gap, the more professional it looks. So 3 16 of an inch is going to be the gap, not just above and below, overall. So I got my measurements. So now what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'll measure from the inside gap here. So that is roughly six inches. So it's actually five and 15 sixteenths. So I'll write it down. 5 and 15 16 so if this is yours again this is for a 24 inch wide cabinet 21 inch um, interior dimension grab your tape measure measure on the inside and make sure <clears throat> you cut a scrap piece so what we'll do is we'll cut a scrap piece first at that 5 and 15 16 and then we'll see what how it works for us voila I'm just cutting one. 
because I'm going to use this. I'm going to keep my jig set up so that way I'm not changing it. And I'm going to make one and see whether or not it's the exact length that I want. So that way I know I don't want to go make 15 of these and then be really disappointed that I made a mistake. So I'm going to make one. This bit over here, sneak around, does the cope bit. And what this is, is it'll hog out all of the material. Now, a part of this painful process is the setup, and that's why I don't like changing bits. So I leave the bit in there, I leave the height. This is a, the common panel door that we make, so I leave it in there. Now I have this little simple jig. It's a piece of scrap plywood, it's a hold down clamp, and it's a piece of quarter inch MDF. And what that does is that I have to run this on the end of the material. So on the end grain like so. Now, to do that, if I try to hold this like this through the router, it will invariably catch and fling and probably get stuck somewhere in the body part that you don't want it to be. So for me, I like to put it in the jig. And this is the cheapest one you can get because I made it. And then you just use the hold down. And you can see it stays right where it is. So now I can turn the router on. And I just run the piece. Nice and slow. You'll notice right on that edge right there, you can see minimizes the tear out because it supports that edge right here. If not, it would rip all out that end. So I'll switch it around the other side and do it again. A little bit of minor sanding, but there is your cope joint. So let's go check it out and test it and see how it fits. The nice thing about having a bit set that's matched like that is that if once you get them to the right height, they are perfect and there's very little sanding. So you can see it goes together really well. Now check the width of my door. And imagine that I'm 10 and 5 sixteenths. Raise your hand and you dance. Oh, sorry, it gets exciting when you don't have to do it again and again and again. So now I can cut because I'm making two doors. I just need to make three more cuts of this size. So what I just ran was the stick bit, so which is that detail with the bead on it. Now, when this goes together, I'll try to do it at the top, you've got a perfect joint, if I can hold it. Come on, nice and tight. And you can see that if done right, they stick together really nice. They're real flush across the top, and then we just glue them. So to go back over, cope, stick, cope. Stick. And yes, I'm spoiled that I've both already set up in one large router table. So now we really have all of our parts to make the door except for the center panel. Now how I do the center panel is that I will lay down my, I'll lay it a little closer to you. You'll notice the tongue only goes so far. There's a gap here of three eighths of an inch. So I will just lay it on my material again. When you buy your bit set, it'll actually tell you 
if you want, the panel should be this size. So I just mark where they are. And then I'll just take a tape measure and then I will burn an inch. So I hold an inch here so that the loose end of the tape measure, I don't get messed up. So what I'm reading right here is looks like 17 and three quarters. So it's 16 and three quarters because of the um, burning an inch. So when I have 17 and three quarters, something to take into consideration is we won't, don't want this panel so tight in this opening that it actually will, um, when it expands and contracts, we could potentially blow it. So I like to go a little bit less. An eighth to a sixteenth of an inch will give it a little bit of room for this panel to expand and contract in this frame. So it'll basically do this in the frame. So that set 16 and three quarters, we're gonna shrink it down to just under three quarters at 15 and or 16 and 11 sixteenths. Now, cause I'm making two panels, I've got it cut once for the length. So you're not having to cut each individual piece. And the next one is, I'm gonna shut this off, five and 13 sixteenths. To be honest with you, I can't see that much. Oh, I'm there right now. Five and 13 sixteenths. I'm gonna go a little more. There. One, two. Before I get too far in this process, because the panel's going to sit inset of the of the style and the rail, I just want to sand it now, make it a lot easier for myself when I'm putting it together. time to set her up and get her together. Now remember I've got two doors so I've got parts all over the place. So we just need two rails and two styles. I always place it in front of me like this so that way I can see what I'm doing, see if there's any issues with the wood or any imperfections. And then I just start gluing the coped areas. Because the only thing that's gonna hold this joint together is the glue. And why it works so much is because there's so much surface area throughout all of these nooks and crannies. So you've got this shoulder, you've got the side of the tongue, you've got the end of the tongue, the other side of, of the tongue, and then that cope joint. So there's a lot of glue surface to be able to glue to and make it nice and strong. So keep it held up. I look, I sight down the side, and then I just try to keep it as flush as possible. And you can see it's nice and tight. You can see that squeeze out there, which is what I want. And then that one's good. Same thing, start in the back. Use my thumb here to set it. Now I can slide my panel in. Again, it's not so tight that it doesn't fit and it has a little bit of wiggle. seems pretty square at this point. What I normally do is I'll throw it in the clamps and sometimes the clamps will act to help square it up a little bit. You can see there's a little more of a gap here. So my guess is it's not that square right now once I really see it. But sometimes when you push it in, it will see the way it just did that weird writing it. It took everything and twisted it into shape. So that's actually a good sign and we'll see whether or not it actually worked or not. And you can kind of watch on this side. See the way it's loose here? There's a gap there and there's a little bit, it's loose here and tighter there. So it should do the same thing over here when we tighten it. Well, there's all the glue squeeze it out. I want to get rid of that so you can see what's going on. 
There we go. 23 and just over a half. And 23 and just over a half. So that is done. I would say before you're, you get too carried away, grab yourself an old t-shirt um, and some water and then just dip or get any of that glue residue. So that way, anything that's squeezed out in that bead, you can get out now. So that way you don't have to sand inside of that bead. On top, I don't really care so much because I can hit it with the sander. And then I also flip it over and get some of the stuff that I can't, I can grab now that's oozing out the bottom. Just makes life a little bit easier in the long run. So we'll let that dry. Give it about 30 minutes, depending on what kind of glue you use. Normally I would say let it sit for about an hour. That way it starts to cure very, really well before we can start to sand it and fit it inside of our cabinet. I'm gonna go get some coffee.